If you're like me, your biggest hope from WWDC 2023 was not a $3,500 pair of sunglasses, was not new iPad widgets, but the transition of the Mac Pro over to Apple Silicon and the wait is over, but I kind of wish it wasn't. Let me start from the beginning. My thought process was that Apple was going to release older new M2 versions of their chips to their respective computers. So the M2 Pro, the M2 Max, and the M2 Ultra, and they were all going to go to either the laptops, the Mac Studios, the Mac Minis, or the new iMacs. And they were going to leave something special for the Mac Pro. My exact thought was they were going to make some sort of super chip and put that in the Mac Pro, which would be maybe a combination of two M2 Ultra chips, maybe four, with the assumption that maybe you'd be able to upgrade the GPU, definitely be able to upgrade the RAM. And from what we saw, that's not what we got. We actually got the exact same computer as the Mac Studio with some PCI slots that almost nobody will use for $3,500 Canadian more than the Mac Studio. Are you kidding me? So with that massive disappointment, let's look at a few questions so you don't have to be one of the few that actually buy this disaster. So the first thing we're gonna look at is, what is the power of the M2 Ultra? What is the differences between the Mac Studio and the Mac Pro? Who is this computer designed for? Why did they build this computer? And what does this mean for the future of the Mac Pro? Before we continue, I just wanna thank everybody that's left such amazing comments on the videos. I'm just getting over bronchitis, so that's why this video is coming out a little late and I might sound a little weird. I don't really promote this channel to any of my friends and family, so all this is pretty much organic reach. Usually in YouTube, you expect a lot of trolling comments and a lot of mean things to show up on the internet. I could kinda of care less, but when I see really nice comments like that, really supportive comments from people that I don't know, it, it really does mean a lot to me. And with all that being said, Let's look at the power of the M2 Ultra and see what's in this Mac Pro. So like the previous M1 Ultra, the M2 Ultra is two M2 Max chips fused together, but they did it a little bit differently this time. See, one of the issues with the previous M1 Ultra chip was, although it was two M1 Max chips, they worked in parallel and it wasn't a combination of power. Let's look at this like cars. What people thought was the M1 Max chip was let's say a 500 horsepower vehicle. And when you had the M1 Ultra chip, they were expecting the two fused together to produce a thousand horsepower. But what you ended up getting was just two 500 horsepower cars going at the same speed. So although you did have a thousand horsepower on the road, it wasn't really being utilized like a thousand horsepower. That's why when you looked at some rendering times, the M1 Max and the M1 Ultra chips were almost identical. And people were a little confused by that. But Apple with their clever engineering has fixed that issue. And with the M2 Ultra chip, it now produces 1.8 times the amount of performance that the M1 Max chip has. So they really did start to utilize the combination of power between the two M2 Max chips. So now we're closer to that thousand horsepower car than we were in the original M1 Max and the M1 Ultra where it was just either one or two 500 horsepower cars. So now we kind of get the full power here. That's why these M2 Ultra chips have been blowing out some render times and have some amazing power that 98% amount of people will never use in their entire lives. It's a lot of power. It is a monster of a chip. So now that you know the upgraded power of the M2 Ultra, let's look at the differences between the Mac Pro and the Mac Studio because on paper, they're the exact same. Both of these computers can be spec'd out to a 24 core CPU, a 75 core GPU, 192 gigabytes worth of RAM. That's where it stops. It stops there. This is where one of my big issues with the Mac Pro comes from because I was listening to some videos, movie, TV, audio editors, and some of their workflows with everything open need 300 gigabytes worth of RAM just to process. So how, how is this gonna work? And that's the most it comes with. So I don't understand how this very super small, finite group of people are gonna be able to use this computer that's not upgradable, but you also have the Mac Studio that offers the exact same specs for like half the price. I do think it's fair to add that there is a little bit more IO on the Mac Pro than the Mac Studio for probably obvious reasons, comparisons to the size, but why the heck did they take the SD card slot off the Mac Pro? There's gonna be SD cards used and you just put them back on the laptop. Why are you taking them off again? And the last thing that's different is obviously the PCI slots, but you can't upgrade the GPU and you can't upgrade the RAM. So, mm. <coughs> I might not make it through this video. And so if you're one of those people that are asking Connor, what is a PCI slot? You definitely do not need it. And then you definitely do not need this Mac Pro computer at all. You probably don't even need the Mac Studio. So to recap that unplanned rant, the only differences between the Mac Studio and the Mac Pro is the fact that the Mac Pro has a little bit more ports the PCI slots, and now no SD card. So if you don't need a PCI slot essentially, do not buy this computer. Which brings us to the next question, which is 
Who did they make this computer for? Apple's probably gonna tell you that they built this for, you know, the Hollywood producers, the big sound producers on TV shows and stuff like that. Like audio engineers at Skywalker Sound who work on feature films like Oscar winner Top Gun Maverick and artists at Color Collective who grade films like Oscar winner. They really aren't. I've watched a few different videos of different sound producers talking about this product and they are not gonna upgrade their Intel Mac Pros to this computer. That tells you a lot because these are people that have to utilize insane amounts of RAM because they're just running so much on their computers. So this 192 gigabytes worth of maximum RAM that you can have, I don't know if it's gonna work for everybody involved in here. If you're a YouTuber, you do not need this machine. If you're a college student in a videography class, you do not need this machine. If you have to ask yourself, do I need this machine? You probably do not need this machine. I do not need anything close to this machine. Let's put it this way. If you were not absolutely bogging down an M2 Pro MacBook Pro, you do not even need to come close to the Mac Studio. Stick with trying to destroy one of these first and then you can work your way up. I don't know who's gonna buy this computer. That is the issue because everybody's already got their Intel Mac Pros or the Mac Studio and that investment, depending on how you spec it out, just it doesn't make sense to me. There's no business case to buy this Mac Pro in my opinion. Which brings us to our second last question, which is why did Apple build this computer? Apple, I love you and I love 99% of the things you do, but you were lazy as hell on this one and I do not like it. See, I think Apple kind of strung out this full transition to Apple Silicon a little bit too long and the expectations got a little bit too big and they were not out there trying to damper any of these expectations. As I said in the start of this video, I thought there was gonna be some sort of super chip involved in this computer. Turns out to not be the case, but I don't understand why they didn't do just a little bit more. Even though we don't have a super chip, I think the issue of stringing it out this long, Apple's already working on the next generation of the Mac Pros, and they probably don't even really care about this one. See, the issue is, is the Intel Mac Pro, the cheese grater, came out 2019. We're in 2023 right now. You gotta think that Apple's already planning for 2025, 2026, and that is the next generation of Mac Pros. And unfortunately, this machine's just kind of fallen in the middle. And I think Apple just kind of said, hey, we've made this full transition at Apple Silicon. Here you go, you guys wanted it, there. But past my bronchitis, it leaves a very sore taste in my mouth and I'm just a little disappointed that everybody approved of this. I can see maybe going through the discovery stages on running this as an item, but the fact that this was the final approved item is just, I don't know, I'm not a big fan of it. And to clarify, when I say next generation of Mac Pro, I mean a complete revamp. So this means a new design, new chips. This will probably come out in like the M4 chips, maybe the M5 chips, but I think it's gonna be a much smaller package because everybody now knows the power that you can cram into something such as a Mac Studio. Like, it is so small, it's like two and a half Mac Minis, which are ridiculously small. I still have one over here. So I think they're gonna bring down the size quite a bit. I think the next generation of Mac Pros are gonna have this crazy super chip that everybody's been expecting from Apple. And I don't know what's gonna come with the port side of things. I guess it'll kind of depend what's going on with Thunderbolt and USB-C in the future. But I do think the next generations of Mac Pros are gonna be a lot less of a disappointment. So I think the reason why they built this is because they just wanna move forward and move past this too much time has elapsed, and the Mac Studio being released as a product was almost a red flag to me immediately because I went, this is too good of a computer at too good of a price. To me, it seems like Apple took their older siblings project from a few years ago and submitted it to their class today. And I think we always know how that goes. It's always a disappointment. So to just recap quickly what I think is gonna come from the future of the Mac Pro, smaller form size, even with the PCI slots, a crazy powerful computer chip, rather if that's M3, M4, M5, I think it's gonna probably be in that M4 to M5 range. And either than that, maybe a little bit more ports, maybe an SD slot, probably not. But either than that, I don't really know what Apple can do past that. I mean, the Mac Studio is such an amazing product already. I mean, if Apple's not gonna go full out on the Mac Pro in the next generation, I'd say almost scrap it. Mac Studio is absolutely amazing and can be fine for 99.9% .9 of people. It really is an amazing product. With all that being said, let's see what Apple comes out with this September. Maybe there might be something different, you never know, but we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for sticking around with me. Hopefully I'll be a little bit more healthy in the next one. Cheers. Have a great rest of the day.